Okay. Can everybody hear me good? Perfect, wonderful. Yesterday I had a microphone in my mouth, basically, so get the word out, but this is wonderful. So uh, my name is Jon Andersson, and I'm working for Wikimedia Sweden. Uh, I've been working mainly with a project called European Awareness, and some of you might have heard my presentation about that yesterday. But today I'm going to focus on a specific part of that project, uh, the Wikilove's Public Art Photo Contest that we organized. And um, the Wikilove's Public Art Photo Contest, I'm going to give you a short background about that, uh, what, the idea was, what it was. The idea was that we wanted to get more photos of public artworks to illustrate our articles on Wikipedia about artists, about the different artworks, about different style, and et cetera. Uh, we figured that, you know, what better topic, or what topic needs images more than art? Uh, in this case, I mean, I think there is very few topics that we, where you really can say, you know, one image is worth more than a thousand words than this. Uh, so we figured this would be a good topic for that, and an important one to get more images on. And uh, we also thought that, you know, artworks are quite debated in society. There are quite a big interest amongst a lot of people. The, this, you know, in, in Sweden at least, for example, there are huge debates about, you know, is this good art? Is that bad art? Uh, there is a lot of people really thinking this is important and crucial and interesting. Uh, so we thought we could perhaps reach a new kind of group, uh, a different kind of group that we haven't reached, Vikilev's Monument, for example. Um, and. Um, you know, and also find new collaboration with different art institutions. There are plenty of those, and uh, they are very, have fantastic treasures, but we haven't really uh, reached them so far. And um, I believe that these focus contests are more interesting because you can actually communicate much more easily to these specific groups. You can find the organization that are interested in this and target them. Uh, if you have a contest that are focusing on like, you know, everything, then you have the problem that you can't, you can't focus your external communication that well. And, you know, we th think we were pretty okay with the outreach. We had a, and getting these new collaboration and these new people, um, more than 57% of the uh, participants were new. And uh, we had a lot of new institutions that were working with us this year. And we, we figured that, you know, this is important for us to get the illustration, but it's also important for us to digitize this for the, you know, common good, because artworks are often very winnable. They are not protected by law as strongly as monuments are, for example. Uh, often there's the municipalities that have the decision if to remove them or not. Uh, so the, they can be on a place one day and you know, suddenly they are moved to like a storage facility for years to come. Uh, they're often stolen, um, you know, especially when there are uh, vulnerable metal, um, expensive metals in them. You know, copper, for example, or bronze statues, they are simply you know, cut down and removed by thieves. Uh, a lot of vandalism. So, you know, there is a deadline when it comes to artworks. There is a need to get them digitized. Um, and th that was mainly like the reason why we thought we should do this. We also realized which was a fun experience that we had, hadn't really, uh, that we weren't really sure that we would get. But it turned out that, at least in Sweden, that I know for sure, we had a lot of uh, female participation. There was more, much more women coming to this photo uh, safaris that were organized uh, to take part. There was the, the people interested in organizing it were mostly women. Um, and I don't know if it's the topic or if it's just the, the you know, general idea of having a photo contest that is the interesting thing here for them. Um, and we were doing this with Europeana, uh, which is a, a trans-European organization for, where the glams in Europe are cooperating, uh, uploading their material on one portal, or making it searchable in one portal. And Europeana, they had, a, of course, their reason to be there as well, to help us out with this. And they really want to increase their visibility on Wikimedia Commons. That was the main reason for them to do this. They wanted, you know, they want the Wikimedians to know about their interest in free knowledge and open data and all of that. So they, you know, they want to be there where it happens. Uh, and they want to spread the, the knowledge and the better understanding about this type of, you know, the value of free information. So they thought this was very, like their crucial part in this was really to work with external communication. There were a lot of focus from them to, you know, get this into their newsletter on the blog post, you know, get their 2,200 glam institutions to know about this and know about, like, there is a general interest amongst the public to, you know, about artworks and that. Um, so after months of preparations, uh, we had five countries that took part in this, and we did it the first time this May in 2013. And um, all of them are doing this as kind of a small pilot. Um, we had a problem here that nearly no country has a national database. As I said, they are not protected by law. Uh, it's usually the municipality that has it, or an institution like a museum that has a database. So 
that, for that reason, most uh, countries, they had two or th one or two or three cities that were participating, because that was the database that they managed to gather this first year. Um, and uh, we tried to do this in a kind of a federative fashion, where like all the, all the countries could take the decision how they want to focus this contest, if they want, because you know, there are free and panorama issues, uh, and uh, if they wanted to focus on the public art that is outdoors, or if they want to focus on public domain artwork that are inside the museums. And um, uh, of course, like organizing this um, took, uh, you know, you guesstimate a lot of things. You think you have an idea how long it's gonna take to get a logo like this ready, to get a database set up, uh, website in order. Uh, you know, it never really turns out that you are that lucky that everything smooths on perfectly. But we got everything in place in time, and uh, you know, next year it will be much easier because now it is, we have documented quite well, I think. Uh, we have connected it to the Vicky Loves Monument database, so it's easy that we can use the same tools, at least that's how Martin Demers explained it to me. Uh, so that will be, make it much easier. Um, so it will be small modifications of the tools rather than having to build new ones. Which leaves me, I should change the slide here, the technical stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we set up lists on Wikipedia that are harvested by bots, uh, uploaded to a database, uh, with all the structure templates and all of that is in place now. Um, we put up yeah, the website with a pretty decent documentation how to do it, so it should be quite easy for other countries to follow and do the same, put up the same website. It's developed by a Swedish volunteer that was really good at it. Um, so I thought I should tell you a little bit about the different countries, what happened there, and I'll start with Sweden. Um, just to give you like a bit of an overview, because all of them were all of the countries were struggling with different things, and it might be you know a little bit inspirational, or perhaps you know give you some ideas what challenges it might be and how to solve them, or at least who to get in contact with. Uh, in Sweden, we had a very unclear freedom of panorama legislation when it comes to artworks. Uh, it's not really it's perfectly fine to take a photo, put it in a book, sell the book. It's perfectly fine to take a photo, put it in a postcard, sell the postcard. It's not really clear if you can put it on a website and have you know, some kind of income from it, or if you can put it on a website and then someone can download it and put it on a, in a book. Um, because this was written before the time of the internet. It's all legislation. Uh, and there are different interpretation, and there was, you know, um, yes, general difficulties with it. And we also, there was not really like any suitable databases ready for this. So we decided we were gonna focus on art museums instead. Uh, in the end, we had a fantastic group of volunteers that contacted a bunch of art museums, all the ones that had a uh, large collection of public domain artworks. And we ended up having nine art museums participating, which was a like, fantastic number, I think. Uh, it was, in Sweden, that, I mean, it's more than half that were actually suitable for the contest to participate in that. And um, for us, it's, uh, it has some you know, specific benefits and some specific problems with working with art museums. I mean, of course, there's a lot of work with coordinating it with them, you know, getting in contact with them, all of that. Um, but it also has a huge value having, to done, having done that because you have suddenly a new cooperation initiated with that. Um, you ha have the problem when you're in the museum and you're taking photos, you have you know, glass monitors on top of the artworks often, you know, it will be reflections, it might be not that perfectly lit up. Um, but with, you know, when you have a nice cooperation, and some of them are more flexible than others, some you know, allowed us to have tripods, for example, and put on more lightning and stuff like that, had guided tours and you know, that kind of things. Uh, some are more like, yeah, you can come here, it's free, but you know, we are not really gonna help practically that much. Um, but uh, yeah, but we think that we put a good ground for it and we hope we can con you know, convince a few more of them next year to both join and to um, make it more flexible, you know, putting on the lights when we're there, basically. Um, and uh, we, you know, we, but this was, the art, the art museums are in the big cities, especially one with public domains, artworks. Um, and so we decided, you know, this is a problem in itself because you, you reach the people that are in the big cities. You don't really reach the people that are in the countryside. Uh, so we decided we're gonna try to do something about it. Since there is no national database about public artworks in Sweden, we decided we'd create one. Uh, so we applied for money and we, from uh, the Swedish Innovation Agency, and we were happy enough to get it. So we hired a person, Andrea Costa, my coworker, that is, has been working now for, well, since February, basically, with putting up a database, contacting municipalities, explaining what, you know, what open data is, and you know, convincing them to release their data about artworks, or gathering them, because in a lot of cases, they don't know about what artworks they have themselves, which is kind of sad. Um, but we're gathering it now. Uh, it's getting on quite well, and it's, we hope this, this will be connected to Wikidata, and that uh, more countries will try to you know, use this database setup and 
uh, as a way to get in data, because I think a lot of countries will have the same problem. There is a general lack of knowledge in the, you know, amongst authorities, what they have actually out there. Um, and uh, yeah, the museum was also quite good and helpful with communicating about these events. And you know, we organized photo safaris. We had a bunch of them. Um, they were not that big. Usually, we spent. It was kind of a relaxed way. We just, you know, decided, oh, okay, we're going to have a few as well. And we or, we put up some Facebook ads, and we had, you know, 10, 15 people joining each time, and, and a lot of them were the same people. But in total, it was like 30, uh, 30, 35 different people. Uh, 15 of them joined the last time, so they didn't actually have time to upload images for the contest. Uh, but you know, they were great people having there, and they were very uh, interested in learning more about commons. And you know, we had, uh, you know, we call it Vicky Fika, where you just have coffee together and just chill afterwards, and you know, talk a little bit. So learning, teaching them, or telling them a little bit about you know what this is all about. Um, then I would like to tell you a bit about Vicky Loves Public Art in Spain. Uh, it was done in Barcelona this year. Uh, they, you know, the, you know the Catalans. They are incredible. They get you know, the whole, <laughs> the whole Catalan community uh, to, you know, join in. And they had a great support from the Catalan authorities. They had on the official website of Barcelona there was a big banner about Vicky Loves Public Art for the first two weeks, I think. And you know that kind of the, uh, the type of PR that you really can't buy. Um, but you know, uh, and I think that's something that you can take you should take with you from this. That you know, aim high, ask them. You know, they can't do anything to say no to you. Um, they also ended up having the winning photo, which is this one. They were, of course, you know, they were super active on social media and all of that. Um, and they had this winning photo, which is a beautiful one. It's supposed to represent the Catalan flag. I've heard. Um, so they were quite happy that this one won. Um, they had two fantastic volunteers I would like to mention especially. I have to read from my notes. What, how to pronounce their names, Pere, P-L-R-Z-E, and uh, uh, Enfo, that by themselves took like 5,000 images uh, <laughs> under a month, <laughs> quite impressive. Um, then we had Vikilov's public art in Finland. In Finland, uh, to be honest, the legislation is, you know, it's not very free, it's got pretty crappy legislation, they don't have freedom of panorama for artworks at all. Um, they decided, okay, this is fun. We, we would like to join. We would like to cooperate a little bit more with Wikimedia Sweden. Uh, they wanted to practice before Wikilove's monument, uh, see how it worked out, you know, how, what type of people you would need, you know, for creating this type of uh, list to get up the database to, you know, how to do the outreach and all of that. Um, and they also looked at this as a kind of a PR opportunity because when you have a, a tar like a focused contest like this, you can tell the press that, okay, look, you know, we have this international contest, we would like to be part of it, we have all these great artworks in Finland, but hey, look at our list, it's 76 objects long, because that's what it had that was under the public, old enough to be public domain. Um, and you know, that's pretty bad, they thought. So they wanted to communicate about that. Um, and uh, that was the first time they were trying to join into a, one of these uh, international contests, photo contests, and they won the second prize of this image, uh, a fountain in, in uh, Lapti. And then Wikilaus Public Art in uh, Austria took place in two place, uh, con uh, sorry, cities, uh, in Vienna and in Linz. They were very, very good at getting people to participate. They had like, uh, I think it was 60% of the, or no, 48% 40, of the, let's see here. Uh, well, a, a large part of the, 48% of the participants in total came from Aus uh, Austria, and they, they were very good at also getting their list. They would list the two lists from the kind of these cities. They were basically covered completely. They had 83% coverage of photos after the contest was over, and um, yeah, they were very active on on uh, like getting their website up really fast uh, and uh, you know sending out press releases all the time and uh, social media and all of that. So that was their way of succeeding like that. Um, they had a lot of press mentioning, for example. And Wikilove's Public Garden in Israel was done without uh, Wikimedia Israel. It was led by the Israeli Museum in cooperation with uh, PikiWiki. And uh, they had uh, their own database already, so they used that to create the list. And I think they focused, they got them on English Wikipedia. Um, they had, therefore, they had artworks all over the country, but I think it's only a fraction of what, like, the actual amount of artworks. I don't think they have complete coverage, as far as I understood. Uh, they were the only non-European place uh, country to participate, and they won the third place. It's beautiful. 
statue. Um, and we, you know, we had a, oh, now the headline fell off, but the, we had a jury with uh, four people, international jury. Uh, each country, just like in Wikileaks Monument, they nominated uh, 10 images to this. They went through them. Um, you know, four people, that's good enough for 50 images in this case. So um, in total, we handed out uh, 1,000 euros in three prizes, 500, 300, and 200 euros. Um, and yeah, they were the ones, they had all going on on Meta. That's where they did, or the commons, I mean. Uh, they were like, you know, de deliberating openly. Now oh, there it comes. And um, yeah, so we, and this is the numbers. We had 9,255 uploads. It was from 225 people. As, as I said, there was in Sweden, for example, there was at least 15 more that didn't upload in time uh, that I personally know of. Uh, I think it was the same in a few other countries that they had some events the last week, you know, just to try to gather last people that could be interested. Um, so I, yeah, but, and it was 2,169 public artwork, which is a number I'm very, very happy about. That's the one I'm most happy about, actually, because, you know, when it comes to artworks, they are spread out so much. It's really, it would be really, really expensive for the municipalities to go around sending a photographer to take photos of all of them. Uh, but here we got really good coverage of them. Uh, you, I mean, which is fantastic. Um, and you know, this was only limited pilots. So that's something you have to take in consideration when you, when you look at these numbers. This is possible to scale up both inside of the countries. I mean, it was, as I said, only a few of the cities participating. And you can also, of course, scale up to more countries. And that's what we would like to do, of course. So, uh, you know, we need you guys. Uh, we want to do it in more countries. We want to do it bigger and nicer. Uh, I would be very, very happy if there would be someone interested in joining the international team, um, because now it's pretty Sweden dominated, which is bad, I think. We're going to miss out a lot from that. So yeah, please join us. Uh, if there's any questions, please. OK, thank you. <laughs>